Hey, what's up, guys? It's Michael here, and I know it's a little late, but uh, we're gonna do the Need for Speed Hot Pursuit with this. See, let's get right into it. The Need for Speed series has always been around for quite some time now. I originally started playing the Need for Speed series back on the PlayStation 2 with Hot Pursuit 2, so it was nice to hear that the next Need for Speed game that they were coming out with was a remake of the original. So here we are with the final game, and Criterion brings the Need for Speed right back to its roots with the cops and the latest and ultra fast cars from Porsche, BMWs, Fords, and of course, Aston Martin. Yeah. I went there. The car selection consists of more than 60 unique rides from more than a dozen different manufacturers. Every car is separated into five categories like performance, sports, exotic, and more. All the favorites that you would expect to find in this game, or any racing game for that matter, are present and accounted for. Oh, but wait, I know what you're thinking. Before anyone can say the F word, keep in mind that one certain Italian car maker did not want to make an appearance in this game. And that means Ferrari. As good as the car lineup looks though, it's not incredible and it's noticeable that it's a bit too much repetition. The goals of the game are presented to the player when they start the career. Racers are divided into factions who are racers and the police. Racers need to win and deal with all the opposition to advance in the list. As a racer, you have all your Spectre races like Race, Time Trials, and of course Hot Pursuit. Hot Pursuit is hands down the most fun of all the modes in my opinion. And um, The reason I say that is because uh, you get equipped with the tools to use against other racers and the cops. On the other side, there are the police. The officers of the law will come by responding to emergency calls, shutting down races, and disabling cars. They also have tools that they can use against you as well, of course. Um, both racers and police officers earn rewards for accumulating experience and those rewards earn more cars, more weapons, and tools to assist them in their respective careers. What's a really cool feature for those who keep their consoles connected online is Autolog. With Autolog, you can send challenges back and forth to your friends, share pictures, and basically taunt and intimidate anybody on their friends list. Autolog will update you and others when a friend breaks, like, um, let's say a record you did for a race. Moving on to the multiplayer, there's no options for split screen or localized multiplayer. So your only options are to kick it with buddies over Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network. Online does require the use of the EA's online pass though, so if you borrowed, bought, used, or sold the game, you will only be given a 48 hour trial period. After that, you need to buy online access for $10. There are three multiplayer modes, Hot Pursuit, Race, and 101. The game supports up to eight players for each mode, except 101 of course. In Hot Pursuit, you will be uh, put against four other racers and four other cops. Your goal is to finish first while also trying to survive to the end. As a cop, you need to take down all the racers, but it's not as easy since they also have tools to dispose of you as well. Regular race is, well, regular race. Enough said. Unless you have some buddies to play online with, I might say the multiplayer portion of this game is kind of boring. Overall, the challenge is high and the game is incredibly fun. Even with some previous features of the series left out, the game still feels very finished and polished in all aspects. The game is for racing fans of all kind and anyone picking this up is sure to enjoy it. If you play your game offline though, the experience might differ drastically. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe.